Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Zemfira from Zemfira Games and this is another episode of the Desert Wildlife Park. And in this episode we are building a ginormous habitat for the African elephant. So we are finally starting to build the habitats for the desert animals that were already in the game prior to the arid animal pack. And in case you want to see the animals from the arid DLC, go ahead and check out my channel. They are all below the playlist of the Desert Wildlife Park. But let's get started. As already said, we are building a habitat for the African elephant. And let me tell you right up front, this habitat was quite a challenge for me actually. Um, simply because I've actually never built a elephant habitat before. And also not a habitat that is that ginormous. <laughs> I mean, in the last episode we have built a habitat for the black rhino that is right next to the African elephants. And this one is already pretty pretty big, but the elephant habitat is even a number bigger than the habitat for the black rhinos. Obviously the elephant is bigger and we are also housing more elephants than we are housing black rhinos. Um, so that was a challenge. Um, it was quite hard to figure out um, where to start exactly or how I wanted it to look. Um, and since I was really sure uh, that I am doing a waterhole or like a bathing area for the um, elephants, I decided to start with this one because this was just a very fixed um, like object uh, or part of the habitat. Um, so I just decided um, to start with it and then just go from there. <laughs> um, and building uh, this waterhole or bathing area um, was a little hard or harder than I expected. What you are seeing right now is actually the second take. Uh, I built another um, bathing area for the elephants before this one, which took me like an hour. And then I wasn't really happy with it. Um, and I deleted the whole thing and just started again. Um, this habitat also really took me so much time. Uh, I have like four and a half hours of filming material alone plus the hour of the first water hole that I did that I obviously did not put into this video. Um, and then you could say like maybe 30 to 60 minutes extra of stuff that I did off camera. So it did take me quite a while and it is just the outside habitat. Uh, as you might have seen the black rhino habitat, I um, was already talking about the uh, indoor area for the black rhino and also for the elephant, which you can see in the background. Um, it's the rhino and elephant house where they have the inside shelter, but also both an inside area. And this is not even included in all of this. Uh, so you're just seeing the outside habitat and this already took me like six or seven hours. Um, and then I still need to build the rhino and elephant house. It is um, close to being finished. Uh, there's mostly just the roof missing, um, but I might rework the uh, shelter area for the elephants because um, I have read some papers about uh, how elephants should be housed, like uh, real life papers, you could say. They are from the EASA. I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. I'm very sorry. But it is basically a website um, 
where you can read stuff about animals uh, in the zoo and they release some papers where um, like really detailed uh, everything basically what you need to know about or for this animal uh, to house them in a zoo and um, I read the part uh, which was uh, the only interesting one for me, which uh, is the habitat essentials, you could say, or what they need, what kind of fences, how much, uh, how big does it need to be and um, stuff like that and the interior and what needs to be inside, what needs to be outside, what's, what needs to be considered, uh, how the barrier should be and stuff like that, like just a lot of information. Um, and at that time, I already had the interior of the rhino and elephant house finished. But uh, I was like, mm -hmm. I mean, I was really or somewhat close uh, to these realistic um, things. But I was missing some parts or doing some parts wrong uh, i had the idea to be able to split the habitat and also the indoor area um, into two in case the bull needs to be separated from the cows or from the herd in general um, but then i read in this paper that the bull actually needs to be housed in a different building um, because when the cows are basically ready uh, to breed again and uh, have another calf um, but for example the zoo doesn't want uh, this cow to get pregnant or whatever um, and basically because of the hormones that the cow has at that time i don't know how to say that correctly um, but basically the bull obviously can smell it and sense it and it would be too much stress for the bull if he would be then in the same building and not having access to this cow so that is the reason why the bull needs to have a uh, or it is recommended to have the bull in a separate building completely and obviously also have a separate outside area for him um, but at the same time the um, main area where the herd is and where the cows are with their calves it should also be or like the bull should be able to also be in there occasionally um, and well basically uh, the habitat also needs to be bull proof <laughs> um, so the elephant bull also has other requirements when it comes to the barriers and stuff like that than the cows um, and yeah there's just like stuff like that uh, that I need to consider also um, when we have male calves once they reach a certain age um, they need to be separated from the herd um, but they can't be like shipped or transported into another zoo because they are still too young uh, then they also need a third habitat where the these bachelor bulls I call them um, can also be housed separately so there's just so much to consider if I'm going this realistic way and I was thinking about Am I doing this the realistic way, like the full on realistic way, or am I just going as close as possible? Um, but yeah, I think I will go the full on realistic way. And so I need to rebuild the inside of the rhino house, a uh, rhino and elephant house. And I also need to build two more buildings and outside areas for the bull and for the bachelor bulls um, so you won't see me do this in this video i'm only doing like the main uh, habitat where the herd is a uh, house and occasionally the bull also um, but doing also the other two habitats would have been just too much uh, for the time that I had because obviously I needed to put this video out um, for th this Thursday um, and the video also would have been way too long if I would have put that in here too so I might do like a second part um, where I build the other 
habitats or I'm just uh, doing them off camera and uh, might show them to you in like a walkthrough um, I'm not too sure so please let me know what you guys would prefer um, because basically the uh, building and also the outside area for the bachelor bulls and for the main bull would be very similar to the one I'm building right now obviously smaller um, but there wouldn't be like a huge difference so it uh, might not be too interesting for you to see it again but please please let me know uh, what you would prefer um, for these well for these two habitats then but yeah we are not talking about the bulls alone we are talking also about the main herd and the main habitat um, and as I said, I built this uh, water hole that you have just seen and I made this dry mode. Um, this U-shaped mode is normally not recommended anymore because if animals would like fall down in there, they just couldn't uh, climb out on themselves. Um, so normally V-shaped modes are more recommended. But I decided to still do a U-shaped mode just around the um, bathing area because from the water the animals just couldn't climb out of there directly. And on these little parts that you see uh, where the animals could actually access the mode or get up to it, I made sure to put something in front like these wooden logs and rocks and stuff like that so that the animals could not really go up there and couldn't fall into there. So the mode is not really as a barrier but more of just a gap uh, or like a space keeper. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is what I did with this one. Um, and of course I also did these um, pebbles or gravel um, on the outside that was planted and just a low barrier for the guests so they can have a really nice view and don't have like a huge fence in front of their face while um, watching the elephants. Uh, so yeah, that's what I did here. And of course I um, fenced in uh, those trees. I built another custom um, like fence for these ones. This time I went with a round um, design and I made it a, a slightly bit bigger than the fences for the trees that I did in the rhino habitat because the elephant is just bigger, stronger and it obviously could reach the tree better with its trunk than the rhino could because the rhino doesn't have such a long nose. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I did here. Um, and uh, as I was looking for inspiration for a habitat for elephants, um, I saw that uh, the habitats are mostly very, very bare and naked and there's just not a lot going on they had some like rocks and stones and uh, some faux rock walls and of course a lot of like dead trees or like fake trees maybe but uh, not really anything going on there uh, so it was a little bit hard for me to figure something out because uh, I understand why elephant habitats look the way they look in real life because uh, they would basically eat most of the foliage. Um, the animals are really big so they also need uh, like a lot of space in between those like um, well like the trees and stuff like that so they can move around freely um, and the habitat is just so big uh, that you cannot like put it with like a bunch of uh, stuff in there and well you know what I mean um, but I still of course wanted to make it look very nice and maybe even nicer than the habitats that I saw um, so it was quite a challenge not only uh, that they normally are very bare the habitats but also because it was simply that big I didn't really know where to start um, 
So I basically um, just started to make these little islands uh, almost of different objects like uh, the trees with fences and in this fence there would also be like a little bit of a uh, dried bush uh, or eaten up bush and around that some grass and some pebbles uh, to just make like little islands of habitat items <laughs> so uh, yeah it, it was a little hard maybe that's also why it took me so long because I had to figure out how to make it look nice but also um, make it look very open so that the animals can move around um, and also the hitbox of the African elephant in game is just ginormous um, I measured it out and they need to have six or to move in between objects, um, they need to be six meters apart and they need uh, five meters like height uh, to move under things like a door frame, for example. So that is really, really huge. Um, and that also uh, was a challenge for me. Um, not mostly for the outside part, but also especially for the inside part. But you will see that in the other episode. Um, but yeah, they just have like this huge hitbox and especially the rocks that I use. Um, they just make the traversable area so much smaller um, than expected or than with other animals. Uh, so I had to regularly check the traversable area to of course make sure that the animals can use most of the habitat and move around um, the items and of course also use certain items like the enrichment items um, with this little waterfall thingy next to the uh, water area or water hole bedding hole um, I wanted to make like a mud bath and a mud area so uh, you will see that better in uh, the cinematic shots um, where the waterfall is there's also really really shallow water and I also more or less hit the uh, mud bath in there and my idea was that uh, this little area would be a little bit more sunken into the ground and it would be like really muddy in there because there would be a lot of water. This water would also run into the water hole or the bathing hole itself. And this should be just an area where the animal could um, just get a little spritz of water on them or take a um, little shower <laughs> in the... Um, in this little waterfall thingy and just roll around in there uh, in the mud and in the shallow water because obviously they need it for their skin uh, because the mud is like a sunblock for them and it's, it's just really good for the skin so I wanted to make this big muddy area for them um, but making it traversable and usable for them was actually pretty hard that's also the reason why it looks kind of bare and naked um, I wanted to do more rocks on the ground and more rocks around um, but the animals just couldn't um, use the area then even the very flat um, like real rocks or like the desert rocks were not traversable for the elephants although I sunk them into the ground just so that you could see the top of the rock poking out of uh, the um, well the earth uh, and they could not walk over it so the hitbox is really really weird of these animals um, which is pretty sad because it just makes uh, it really hard to make like really beautiful things if I would have just gone for the aesthetics I could have made it different but it would be pretty sad that the animals couldn't use them and I also couldn't get any nice shots of the animals being in this area and it would always just be empty um, so yeah it, it is a little bit sad but um, we gotta go with it if uh, the animals have a, such a bad um, hitbox. It is the way it is, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah. 
and in the background I use these self-made um, hot wired fences so in between there is some hot wire uh, to make sure that the animals are not escaping or trying to break these fences because the uh, elephant is of course a very strong animal um, and as I said earlier we need to build areas for the bull and for the uh, bachelor bulls um, so here I'm making just a huge sliding door that goes to the back of the habitat where uh, it will then be connected to the um, other habitats but as I said I am not gonna build those habitats in this video and you won't see them in the cinematics because I've simply not built them yet um, yeah I, I'm gonna see when I'm putting out this episode uh, so yeah we are just doing a little bit a little hint of what is coming uh, but yeah you got to wait for it I guess <laughs> um, so yeah and as I said to you in the last episodes I am doing a little bit of uh, again information uh, some facts about the animals and the African animal lives of course in Africa and it is not the uh, only elephant in Africa we have this like normal savanna um, African elephant that we all know but they also have like a forest uh, African elephant and of course uh, the Asian elephant and uh, the African elephant is the biggest species uh, of all the elephants and also has the biggest ears that um, can be like used or not can be but are used to uh, cool uh, the body of the elephants and their blood because they have like uh, blood vessels right um, under the skin on the backside of the ear and when they flap with their ears they can cool down the blood that is running through those vessels um, and basically cool themselves and they uh, have of course the biggest ears and it is said that the African elephant um, that its ears are shaped like the African continent and that the Asian elephant ears are shaped like the um, well like India basically <laughs> um, so what do you think about it do you think it looks that way or are you like mm, no not really <laughs> and of course the elephants are best known for their trunks um, which is like really uncommon <laughs> or not uncommon but we don't really have a lot of animals that have a similar nose and um, the elephant's trunk actually has a hundred fifty thousand muscle units in its trunk which is most likely the most sensitive organ uh, or part uh, of all animals which is really impressive and as you might know of course they use their trunk to like pick up stuff from the ground to pluck food of trees um, they also drink uh, with their trunk or not really drink but they like suck up the water into the trunk and then release it into their mouth and they can actually fit up to eight liters uh, of water inside of their trunk and another little difference between the African elephant and the Asian elephant is that the African elephant has almost like two little fingers at the tip of its trunk so one on the top and one on the bottom and the Asian elephant actually only has one of them and also the Asian elephant is smaller than the African elephant and it also has smaller ears but a longer tail actually so if you are seeing elephants you can tell them pretty easily apart by the size uh, of the whole body <laughs> of the size of their ears and also of their tail and elephants are um, very much also known for the sounds they make they do have a uh, 
a huge variety of different sounds that they make um, to basically talk uh, with other elephants and communicate with them but they not only make um, like the sounds uh, that we can hear they also make sounds that the human ear can't actually hear or recognize uh, which is really cool and they also communicate uh, through vibrations that they make and that other elephants can sense through the ground and through their own bones which is also really cool and they can uh, communicate over a huge huge distance um, and elephants are also uh, pregnant for over a year and they of course also take care of the babies for multiple years before they get a new calf. It also really depends uh, how long it is if the animals is like um, or the normal African elephant is I believe nursing his calves um, for two years and the desert African elephants um, nurture their babies for four years simply because um, living in the desert for the animals is just way harder than living in this like more of a savanna um, so that is the reason why the desert elephants just nurture the babies for longer to make sure that they um, have good chances to survive. And the herd or the whole herd uh, is actually moving at the pace of the slowest member of them. So uh, for example if they have a sick animal that uh, can't move as fast as the others or when they have uh, really small babies that simply cannot walk as fast as the big ones they always walk in the slowest pace that is needed so that the whole herd can basically keep up. And that is just really cute, like basically the whole family structure of elephants is just amazing. I saw a documentary about uh, all the different species of animals some time ago. I believe it was from National Geographic and it's just really interesting and so cool to see the uh, differences between those animals. You maybe wouldn't believe in between these three African species that we have. Uh, like how many differences there are because you would think they are all elephants and all living in Africa but they actually have like a huge like variety <laughs> that is really amazing and I can just really recommend that documentary from National Geographic and back to the video here we are building um, this like um, like a platform <laughs> uh, where the guests can walk up and just have a better view from uh, above uh, so they can overview more of the habitat and of the animals because they are simply just so much bigger than the human uh, so it's just easier to uh, watch them and see them if you are standing a little bit over the ground so that's what I did here and I also, of course, wanted to make sure that the guests can have some shading uh, when they are on there. So I use these sunshades uh, that are, I believe, even in the base game or in the Africa pack. I'm not too sure. Um, I saw a picture with something very similar where they had these um, wooden uh, barriers or fences and then uh, these... Uh, poles and like that tree in the middle um, and then these triangular shaped uh, sunshades and I tried to recreate it and I think it went pretty good I also really like um, the different woods that I use it really just gives off a little bit not uh, really modern but more of something that you would maybe even see well not in the wild but it just looks a little bit more African and um, yeah I'm just really happy with how it turned out 
and how the guests can overview the habitat. Uh, they can obviously see into the main habitat but depending how I'm building the bull and a bachelor's uh, habitat, they might be able to see them um, on the other side. But we will see where uh, this journey will take us. And uh, I use these ropes uh, to just um, basically uh, connect it to uh, the pole or to the little... Um, tree that we have in the middle and I think it looks pretty nice it looks uh, very natural also so I am pretty happy with how it turned out and yeah we are almost at the end of this video um, I hope you enjoyed it Leave a like and a comment if you did and if you want to support me a little extra subscribe to my channel um, if you want to see more of course um, so yeah I hope to see you in uh, the next video but until then bye guys